Welcome to UTC AI Studio, AI-powered, creativity-fueled. Have you ever just stopped and wondered, how does a computer actually learn to see? It really feels like magic, right? Well, today you're going to see that magic turns into logic. You know, to recognize your cat in a photo or translate a sentence or even drive a car. But deep down, it's all based on this incredibly cool idea that's actually inspired by our very own brains. So today, let's pull back that curtain. We're going to build a neural network right from scratch. And we'll start with a problem that's super easy for us, but for a machine, well, it's a whole different story. So we all know that this is a three, no question. I mean, it's sloppy, it's low resolution, but our brains just get it instantly. You could show hundreds of different versions of a messy three, and our brain knows it every single time. But for a computer, this is a huge challenge because a computer doesn't see a three. It just sees, well, a grid. A grid of 784 pixels, each one with a different shade of gray. So the real question is, how do you teach it to find the idea of a tree buried in all that messy data? The task goes from comically trivial to dauntingly difficult. What's a complete non-issue for us is a massive hurdle for a machine. And the key solution to this whole puzzle is something called a neural network. All right, to really get how this whole thing works, we've got to start small, I mean really small. We need to zoom all the way in and look at the most basic building block of the entire system. Just one single artificial neuron. First thing first, when I say neuron, I don't want you to picture some complicated cell from your biology textbook. In our world, it's way, way simpler. A neuron is basically just a thing that holds a number. That's it. And specifically, it holds a number between 0 and 1. We call this activation. Think of it like a dimmer switch. 0 means the light is totally off and 1 means it's on at full blast. And anything in between is somewhere in between. Seriously, that's all a neuron is at its core. Alright, it holds number. Big deal, right? What does it actually do with that number? Well, you can think of a single neuron as a tiny little decision maker. And to really understand how it makes those decisions, let's use a fun everyday example. Let's say our little neuron needs to make a classic decision. Should we go surfing or not? So it looks at a few things. First, are the waves good? If yes, it gets a 1. Second, is it crowded? If yes, for the factor of empty lineup, that's a 0. And third, are there sharks? If no, that's a 1 for being shark free. Now here's the key. Not all these factors are equally important. So we give them an importance, which we call a weight. Good waves are a huge deal. So that gets a high weight, let's say 5. Being shark free is also pretty important, so that's a 4. And crowds less of a deal breaker, so that's a 2. We just multiply each factor by its weight and add it all up. Finally, we subtract something called a bias. We'll use 3. You can think of the bias as the neuron's natural laziness. It needs a good reason to get going. So what do we get? The final score is 6. And since 6 is definitely greater than 0, the neuron activates. The dimmer switch cranks all the way up to on. The decision is made, we're going surfing. Every single neuron in the network is just making a simple little decision, exactly like this one based on the weighted information it gets and its own little bias. All right, so we get it. One neuron is one tiny decision maker. But obviously one of these little guys can't recognize a handwritten number on its own. The real magic, the real power, happens when we start connecting thousands of them together and when we assemble them into a network. A typical neural network has this really clean layered setup. It all starts with the input layer. This is just where the raw information gets fed in. For us, that's the bright value for every single one of those 784 pixels. Then at the very end of the line, you've got the output layer. This is what spits out the final answer. But the really interesting stuff, the real magic happens in the middle, in what we call the hidden layers. This is where the network actually starts to figure stuff out and find patterns. So, let's get specific for our digit recognizing network. Here's the blueprint. The input layer, it's got 784 neurons, one for every pixel in the image. Then we've got those middle hidden layers. We're going to use two of them, each with 16 neurons. Now, what are they actually doing in there? Honestly, for right now, that's kind of a black box. A bit of a mystery, we'll get to that. Finally, the output layer has 10 neurons. Why 10? Simple, one for each digit from zero all the way to nine. And whichever one of those 10 neurons lights up the brightest, that's the network's final guess. Now let's tackle that mystery, what on earth is going on inside those hidden layers? This is where we figure out how these things actually think. So let's crack open that black box. The big idea. 
and it's actually beautiful in its simplicity. The network learns by building things up by step in a hierarchy. Each layer learns to spot more complex patterns, but it does it by using the simpler patterns that the layer before it already found. It's like building with Legos. Let's trace how it would recognize, say, the number 9. The first hidden layer. It's not looking for a 9, it's way too simple for that. It just learns to spot tiny basic things like little diagonal edges or small horizontal lines just by looking at the raw pixels. Then the second hidden layer looks at what the first layer found. It sees the pattern of activated edges and it learns to combine them into bigger shapes. It's basically saying, hey, if I see a bunch of these little edged pieces arranged in a circle, that's a loop. Or if I see these other edges all in a row, that's a long straight line. And then finally, the output layer takes those components, the loops and the lines, and puts it all together. It learns that a pattern of an upper loop connected to a long vertical line, well, that's a nine, it's incredible. We've got this amazing structure that can theoretically see a digit by building up patterns. But how does it learn which connections are the right ones? How does it figure out that these edges make a loop and that loop and line combo make a nine? Well, that's where the whole process of training comes in. The way a network learns is by tweaking thousands and thousands of tiny dials and knobs. And there are two types. The first are the weights. Think back to our surfing example. The weight was how important the waves were. Here it's the same idea. A weight controls how strong the connection is between two neurons. The second type are biases. You can think of a bias as basically setting that threshold we talked about. It makes a neuron either easier or harder to activate. So you've got all these weights and biases. Thousands of little knobs that network can turn to tune itself and better. But how many knobs are we talking about? For our simple and digit recognizer, there are almost 13,000 of them. 13,000 individual dials and knobs that have to be tuned to just the right setting for this thing to actually work. I mean, trying to do that by hand, forget it. It would be completely impossible. So, how in the world does it tune all 13,000 of those knobs correctly? Well, it does it through a very, very smart process called learning. It's a trial and error process. Basically, you show the network thousands and thousands of examples of handwritten digits. And for every single one, it makes a guess, gets feedback on how wrong it was, and then it makes a tiny little adjustment to those knobs to get just a little bit closer to the right answer next time. And that whole learning process happens in a constant four-step loop. First step, then network gets an image and makes a guess. We call that the forward pass. Second step, it checks its guess against the real answer and calculates how wrong it was. That's the error. Now the third step, this is the really clever part. It works backwards through the whole network to figure out which of those 13,000 knobs were the biggest culprits for the mistake. This is a famous process called backpropagation. And finally the fourth step, it tweaks those specific knobs just a little bit, hoping to do better next time. And this loop just repeats over and over and over again across thousands of examples until all 13,000 knobs are tuned perfectly. And the network slowly but surely learns how to see. Now, it's really important to remember that what we've just described here, it's kind of like the Model T of neural networks. It's the classic, the original, but it's just the beginning. This basic idea is the foundation for all kinds of specialized, way more powerful networks. You've got things called convolutional neural networks, which are absolute wizards when it comes to images. There are recurrent neural networks that are built to handle sequences like language or speech. And then you have transformers, which are the incredible engines behind those huge models like GPT that are changing everything. Just end on this one thought. We just saw how a pretty simple network can teach itself to understand an abstract idea like the number nine, just by learning to see patterns of patterns, starting with pixels, building up to edges, then loops and lines. Does it really make you wonder, doesn't it? If that's what a small network can do, what about the biggest ones? The ones with billions of neurons and trillions of connections? What kind of patterns? What kind of fundamental truths about our world are they learning to see right now? Thanks for watching UTC AI Studio, AI-powered, creativity-fueled. I'll see you in the next video, where we will cover what our large language models are. Till then, as always, keep learning, keep building, and keep creating with AI.